Since it was first awarded in 1901, over 900 of individuals, have been awarded Nobel Prizes. Approximately 20% of them, are of Jewish origin. 20%, whereas Jewish population is about only 0.2% the whole world's population. Throughout human history, a huge number of widespread diseases, caused premature death, of millions of people. Among them, are pandemics and epidemics, caused by different infectious agents. And no cure, despite, all efforts. The late 19th and early 20th centuries, the period of many revolutionary scientific discoveries. Developing methods for staining tissues and bacteria. Discovering mast cells. Various forms of white blood cells. Existence of blood-brain barrier. The role of surface receptors in immune reactions. Differentiating different forms of leukosis. Establishing the first worldwide serum control station. Finding a cure for syphilis and many other diseases. Some of the first cancer research. And this is far from all, that was performed by one man. Paul Ehrlich, the first scientist of Jewish origin, was awarded Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine, together with no less great scientist Ilya Mishnikov, in 1908. Paul Ehrlich was born on 14th of March, 1854 at Strahan in Upper Silesia, Germany. Today it's southwest Poland. He was the son of Rosa Weigert, whose nephew was the great bacteriologist Karl Weigert, and Ismar Erli, who was an innkeeper and distiller of liqueurs, and the royal lottery collector, and at the same time, the leader of the local Jewish community. After elementary school, Paul moves to Breslau, where he went to Maria Magdalena Gymnasium. At this time his cousin, Karl Weigert, who later became professor of pathological anatomy, already owned one of the first microtomes, a tool, used to cut extremely thin slices of material. Paul was inspired by works of his cousin, and became fascinated by the process of staining microscopic tissue substances. This interest never left him throughout his further studies. In 1870s, after graduation from gymnasium, during his studies, Subsequently at the universities of Breslau, Strasbourg, Freiburg im Bersgay, and Leipzig, Paul Ehrlich continues his cousin's Karl Weigert research in staining tissues. As a result, in 1878, he obtains his doctorate in medicine, with a dissertation, entitled Contributions to the Theory and Practice of Histological Staining. In the same year he continues his work with these dyes and the staining at the Berlin Medical Clinic as an assistant medical director under Theodor Frerichs, who was the founder of experimental clinical medicine. Ehrlich was the first, who classified all the dyes to basic, acid or neutral. Since then, his methods were extensively used in hematology, for staining blood cells, and in pathology for staining tissue slices. In 1882, he proposed method of staining the tubercle bacillus. Bacteria that causes so cruel even today tuberculosis, just two years after it was discovered by Robert Koch. This method, later modified by Tsiel and Nielsen, and derived from it the Gram method of staining bacteria, are still widely used today, in diagnostics of pathogens, that cause many terrible diseases. In the same 1882 year, Paul gets titular professor degree at the Faculty of Medicine in the University of Berlin. A year later, 29-year-old Paul Ehrlich marries Hedwig Pincus, who was 19, in the synagogue in Neustadt. Hedwig was a sister of Max Pincus, who owned the textile factory in Neustadt, later known as ZPB Frotex. In 1887 Ehrlich gets private decent degree, unpaid lecturer or instructor. Later he becomes an associate professor in the University of Berlin, and senior house physician to the Charite Hospital in Berlin. Working with tuberculosis mycobacteria in the laboratory, Paul contracts this serious disease himself, and in 1888 had to travel to Egypt to cure it. He returns to Berlin in 1890. Here, Robert Koch, who became the director of the newly established Institute for Infectious Diseases, 
appoints Paul as one of his assistants, and this was the start of Paul Ehrlich's new immunological studies, studies in several, but interrelated areas, with which his name will always be associated. In his first works on immunity Ehrlich performs experiments on mice. He started to feeding mice with small but increasing doses of ricin, and after a few days discovered, that they became ricin-proof. Moreover, this phenomenon, interpreted by Ehrlich as immunization, still existed after several months. But more important thing was, that such acquired immunity was inherited by offspring of these mice for a few months. Paul concluded, that antibodies which carried this immunity, were transmitted to the fetus via blood circulation of the mother, and also can be conveyed in milk. At this time Ehrlich was also researching the phenomenon of autoimmunity, a process, when individuals' antibodies attack its own tissues, causing severe disease, most of them still incurable today. At this time Ehrlich rejected the possibility of autoimmunity, but some time later it was proven by his student, Ernest Whitesky. In 1894, based on his works on mice immunization, together with Emil Baring, Ehrlich successfully tests diphtheria serum, and in August, the pharmacological company Hoaxed, starts to produce diphtheria remedy, synthesized by Baring Ehrlich. In 1897 Ehrlich moves to Frankfurt am Main, and holds an appointment of public health officer. Two years later, here at Frankfurt, he becomes director of newly established Royal Institute of Experimental Therapy. At this time antiserums were entirely new type of medications, and very often their quality was insufficient. The government established a system to control their safety and effectiveness, and since 1895 only government-approved serum could be sold in the German Reich. Working with diphtheria and antiserum, Paul develops the test toxin, that could then be used as a reference for testing other serums. This made it possible to synthesize much more safe and effective serums. Government serum institutes all over the world copied this German quality control methodology, developed by Paul Ehrlich, and the standard serum was obtained from Frankfurt, Ehrlich's laboratory. Following, diphtheria, tetanus, tuberculosis and other bactericide serums were developed in rapid sequence, mostly for use in veterinary medicine, and all they, of course, were tested at the Institute of Experimental Therapy, led by Paul Ehrlich. During this research period, he expressed the idea, that the cells responsible for immune reactions, have antigen-recognizing structures on their surface, receptors. He proposed, that there was an additional immune molecule between the antigen and the antibody, which he called an additive or a complement. This idea, which played a huge role in the development of immunology, was soon fully confirmed. For providing a theoretical basis for immunology, Paul Ehrlich was awarded the Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine in 1908, together with Elie Metchnikoff, in recognition of their work on immunity. In 1901, Ehrlich was criticized by the Prussian Ministry of Finance, for exceeding his budget, and as a consequence his income was reduced. The support for further research came from Georg Speyer, a Jewish philanthropist and joint owner of the bankhouse Lazard Speyer and Lissen. In 1906, Ehrlich becomes the director of the Georg Speyer House in Frankfurt, a private research foundation, which was built next door to Ehrlich's institute. Here he makes his most significant discoveries in chemotherapy and cancer research. Being a young researcher, in his doctorate thesis, Ehrlich wrote, that the chemical constitution of drugs used, must be studied in relation to their mode of action, and their affinity for the cells of the organisms, against which they were directed. Now his aim was to find magic bullets, chemical substances, which have special affinities for pathogenic organisms, and which could go straight to them and destroy, as well as antitoxins go to the toxins, to which they are specifically related. With the help of his team, Ehrlich starts intensive study of hundreds chemical substances, from the collection, he has discovered by that time. With his Japanese assistant Shiga, he studies and produces Tripan Red, and with Bertheim, 
establishes the correct structural formula of Edoxol, both were effective against trypanosomes and many other protozoa, which cause parasitic diseases. This work was the startup for discovery many other new organic chemicals, which contain trivalent arsenic, against pathogenic agents. In 1905, German scientists Schadden and Hoffmann discovered Spirochetopalida, the agent that caused syphilis, and early, of course, purposed to find a substance against this bacteria. Among hundreds arsenic-containing drugs, already tested for other purposes in his laboratory, and set aside, there was one, number 606. Ehrlich knew, that his assistant Sahachiro Hada, before starting work in his institute, had succeeded in infecting rabbits with syphilis, so he asked him to test this discarded two years ago drug on these rabbits. They found, that this drug was very effective. Thereby, in 1909, it was discovered the first effective drug for treatment syphilis, and also African trypanosomiasis, compound 606, also known as osphenamin, or salverson. Soon it was found, that arsenic contained substance, number 914, also worked against spirochita, with less curative effect, but was more easily manufactured. The substance was called neosalverson. Like in case of most his other earlier discoveries, Erla had to battle with much opposition, before Salverson or Neo-Salverson were accepted for the treatment of human syphilis, but eventually, he became famous, as one of the main founders of chemotherapy. In 1898, German Empress Victoria was diagnosed with inoperable breast cancer. By 1901, her cancer spread to other organs, and her health state seriously worsened. This received much attention from wealthy Frankfurt citizens, so they started collection in support of cancer research. In addition, Emperor Wilhelm II sent a personal request to Paul Ehrlich to devote all his energy in cancer research. As a result, the Department for Cancer Research was established at Institute of Experimental Therapy. Ehrlich perfectly understood, that treatment of cancer could not be expected soon, as it required basic research. He spent later years of his life mostly concerned with experimental work on tumors. Ehrlich discovered increased malignancy of tumors, from generation to generation, in case they are cultivated by transplanting tumor cells. When the tumor was removed, he found precipitously increasing of metastasis. He applied all his past experience in bacteriology and immunology to cancer research, attempted to generate immunity to cancer by injecting weakened cancer cells. Ehrlich's everyday lifestyle included eating little, and smoking 25 strong cigars a day. After recovering from tuberculosis in Egypt, his health never failed him. At Christmas of 1914, severe stress, because of beginning of First World War, led to a slight stroke. He recovered quickly, but his health began to decline. In 1914, Ehrlich, together with other 92 prominent German scientists, scholars and artists, signed the controversial, Manifesto of the 93. Proclamation, which was a defense of Germany's World War I politics and militarism, that was endorsed declared their unequivocal support of German military actions in the early period of World War I. On August 20th, of 1915, being on holiday at Bad Homburg, he had second stroke, which ended his life. German Emperor Wilhelm II, wrote in a telegram of condolence, I, along with the entire civilized world, mourn the death of this meritorious researcher for his great service to medical science and suffering humanity. His life's work ensures undying fame and the gratitude, of both his contemporaries and posterity. Paul Erlich was buried at the Old Jewish Cemetery, Frankfurt. He left two daughters, Stephanie and Mary Ann. Throughout his life, Erlich received many prizes, besides Nobel Prize. He also was an ordinary, foreign, corresponding or honorary member of more than 81 academies and other educational and scientific institutions in many countries. In 1897 the Prussian government elected Paul Ehrlich Privy Medical Council. 
in 1907 promoted him to a higher rank of this council, and, in 1911, raised him to the highest rank, real privy council, with the title of Excellency. The most distinguished German award for biomedical research, is the Paul Ehrlich and Ludwig Darmstädter Prize. His name bears a European network of PhD studies in medicinal chemistry. In 1947, the Steglitz Institute for Serum Research and Serum Testing, and the Frankfurt Royal Institute for Experimental Therapy, was named after its first director. The German Paul Ehrlich Institute. A Crater of the Moon, was named, after Paul Ehrlich, in 1970. If you enjoy this video, please don't forget to subscribe the channel, not to miss updates. And write in comments your wishes, about other, notable Jews, you are interested in.